Okay, so here we are, and I'm with Simon again, and we are going to now do a second part of our, our ginger uh, preparation like we did a few weeks ago. So we had done some um, peeling of the ginger, Simon explained some about harvesting it and so forth, and I'm going to insert a, a little clip here of us actually grinding some of that ginger into a powder, which um, we used in our gingerbread cookies, and did we use it in anything else? I can't remember. I think it's just, it just was in our gingerbread cookies, and it gave them a real zing, so it was this very potent ginger. So what we have now is we have um, some ginger that we had frozen, correct? And this is just a small amount. It's, we're going to do tiny ginger crystallization. So basically it's candied ginger. Simon's so been wanting to make this, so we're going to try to make some candied ginger. And I'm going to I'm going to show you a bottle of the candied ginger just here in a moment. That is actually store bought candied ginger. I don't know if ours is going to look anything like that, but um, it may. We'll see. So this is a bottle of crystallized ginger we purchased in the store. The reason we purchased it was for use, I believe, in chai, if I'm not mistaken, some chai um, coffee that we made. I'm not sure. Chai tea that we made. And so we use it for different things. Um, the We've used it actually when we made gingerbread cookies to decorate with, so it's very interesting. So as you can maybe see, that's what crystallized ginger looks like. And if you chew on that, you might think it's like candy. And yes, it's sweet, but it's also got a real a potent taste to it. So it might burn your mouth a bit. But anyway, that's crystallized ginger. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like. We are going to go ahead and try to make some with our own ginger, like I said, that we harvested in a previous video. and. Because it's such a small amount, and you can see here, this is the small amount of ginger that we have ready to crystallize, we are going to have to really adjust the ingredients because this particular recipe is for 2.2 pounds of ginger. And we have, I believe, if we weigh it on our handy dandy scale here, I believe it's just about point two pounds. So that's a fraction, obviously, of what the recipe calls for. So Simon's looking up the recipe and we're going to start by, I believe, um, what's the first thing we do, Simon? Do you want to start telling us what we do? Chop them into pieces. Okay. So um, these are pretty much pieces all by themselves. <laughs> so we have to decide if we want to chop. It could be a little smaller. Excuse me, we have a little spider up here. Little tiny guy coming from the ceiling. They could be a little smaller. Okay, so we're gonna try to chop these in smaller pieces. So Simon has a large knife that he's going to be using to chop the garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and just Ginger. pan. I'm sorry, did I say garlic? Yeah. This is not garlic. This is we're not gonna crystallize garlic. We're gonna crystallize ginger. So he's gonna cut the ginger. I'm gonna just pan down here and show you the size he's actually going to be chopping. So we'll go ahead. And show, if, show us what you can do there <laughs> and how small you're going to make them. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea. I'll just pick one up here. Kind of show you the size we're looking for here. Try to get them all that size. That's about what we, um, the size we want, right, Simon? Yep. So the next stage would be now to put the ingredients in the pan. So base, the basic ingredients for this are simply water, the ginger, and sugar. And so um, could you tell us how much water we're going to need? To cover the pieces entirely. So basically we're covering the ginger with the water. Oh, 
the larger amount of ginger requires half a lemon, I'm just gonna do the whole half lemon, because why not? That's it, and then we gotta bring it to a boil. So we're bringing this to boil before we do the sugar. Correct. Okay. What we're gonna do is bring this to a boil, and when it comes to a boil, it will have foam on the top, so we're just gonna scoop that off with a slotted spoon. And then once it um, comes to boil, we're going to cover it and let it simmer. So the ginger has been simmering for almost 30 minutes. And um, you can see it is still a little bit above, the liquid is still a little bit above the, the ginger. He's straining the ginger first. Okay. Getting rid of all the water. Okay. Um, and then we're going to be adding a small amount of sh um, white sugar and water. Okay, and can you tell us how much exactly? We have such a small amount of ginger. Could you tell us? Well, the recipe calls for two cups of water and one and a half cups, or is it two cups of sugar? One second. Now it's one and a half cups of water and two cups of sugar. For 2.2 pounds of ginger, though, 2 .2 correct? Pounds of right. Ginger. So you would say you probably did an eighth of a cup of each? Yeah. Okay, so about an eighth of a cup of each is just a, an estimate. We oh, that smells wonderful. <laughs> the whole kitchen smells wonderful. Okay, I've already actually pre-mixed the water and sugar. So he mixed that together. He's gonna go ahead and pour that right in. The reason we boiled it for the correct amount of time for the large amount of ginger is because we were trying to break down, the initial boil was to break down the fibers. Now it's basically just getting it saturated with this sugar mixture. So we will probably, I'm guessing 10, 10 minutes maybe? Maybe. We're gonna estimate about 10 minutes until almost all the water has evaporated. Okay. And we're left with a syrupy mixture. So that's the goal. It's been, I'm not sure how many minutes it's been, but it's probably, I'm guessing, um, five to seven minutes. As you can see, that liquid's just about gone. It's really turned very syrupy, and it is definitely evaporating. So right now, we're just going to, to air dry this, and then hopefully uh, we'll make a decision if we're going to put sugar on it because it, you can also coat it with some, some granulated sugar. So right now, do you feel like it's almost ready to... Oops. I think we're good. Okay, so we're good, and he's going to put that here on the parchment. And then we said this was a very small amount of ginger compared to what the recipe calls for. So a lot of this was a little bit of an adaptation. Well, it's been a, a little bit now, a couple hours since we have uh, taken care of putting this ginger on the cookie sheet with parchment. And now Simon is going to do the uh, sugaring of it. So you can do however much sugar you want to use there. And then in go the gingers. Spread them out on there. Those are beautiful. So we did end up putting our candy ginger into the dehydrator overnight for about six hours, I think, at 150. You don't need a dehydrator. You can leave it out and let it dry, but for the sake of time, we went ahead and did that. And so we there it is. Simon's going to go ahead and taste one for us. <laughs> mm. And very delicious. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. And so that is candied, aka crystallized ginger. And uh, that is it for today. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And remember to stay rooted. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.